do I preach the Bible as the very word of God? Why do I sh set aside other authorities of this world and go to a book that the most recent author lived almost 2,000 years ago? Is there not something else with authority? Is there not something else with power? There may be, but it compares in no way to the word of God. And so, preacher, once again, I plead with you to go to the Bible. Go directly to the Bible and uphold it before your congregation, that they might hear from the Word of God, and that they might understand its power. And so that whether they are sitting in a congregation, in a church setting, or whether they are at home and open it for themselves, that they might understand that the Word of God is supreme and that the Word of God surpasses every authority and every bit of wisdom that this word world has to offer. We have considered repeatedly the encouragement out of the scriptures itself, taking the example of Jesus, how that he in temptation and he in, tem in teaching went to the Word of God. We have heard from the Apostle Paul some of his very final words as he counsels his young charge, Timothy. And he says, Timothy, preach the word. We have heard from Isaiah that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Well, I come once again to the Old Testament and to the Psalms which speak with power about the Word of God. And I come to Psalm 138 and I take you to verse 2. I will bow down toward your holy temple, David says, and give thanks to your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word according to all your name. You see, the Lord has chosen his word and he has magnified his word. What is it on the first day of creation that the Lord does? On that very first day when he created light and he said, let there be light. He spoke and it was in place. He spoke the command and it so happened. The Lord has continually exalted his word and he has continually exalted his written word as it is taken and sent forth for people to hear it and for them to be gripped by its power. He sends the Holy Spirit to take the things of Christ, to take the word of God and to emblazon it upon hearts who are ready to hear and ready to receive. Does that include you today? Oh, let it be that your heart is open to the word of God. For he says he has magnified, he has lifted it up, he has set it on a different level than all other things. Also in verse 4 of Psalm 138, we read David saying, All the kings of the earth will give thanks to you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. And they will sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Once again, David says, the Lord and his word are intertwined so closely that people, even great kings, rulers of the earth, who have seen much of the pomp and seen the power of this world, when they hear the word of God, they will understand that here is something different. Here is something with unspeakable power and glory. Psalm 119 is by far the longest psalm in the entire Psalter. And it is focused upon the Word of God and lifting up the Word of God. All 176 verses. And I take you to a select portion of these. Go with me to Psalm 119 and verse 89. Some of these will be well, you will be well acquainted with. Psalm 119 verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord. Forever is a very long time. But the Lord says, Forever his word is settled in heaven. And your faithfulness, Lord, continues throughout all generations. You establish the earth and it stands. Here is the permanence. Here is the abiding power of the Word of God 
that it has been settled. It is not up for debate or for change. It is not to shift and sway as this world does and as the opinions and fads of this world do. But the Word of God, it is like a rock of Gibraltar and even more. It is something that is strong and will stand the test of time. And it will stand by you in the time of your testing, in the time of your temptation. Even as Jesus goes to Deuteronomy those three times as the devil comes to him with various trials and tests, Jesus goes to the Word of God. You can too. And that is your best resource. That is the strong arm on which you can lean. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Go with me also to verse 105, because it speaks of the word of God as the lamp and as the guide which we so desperately need. We read here, Your word, Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. How often have you been in a dark path, whether in the physical sense or in a spiritual sense, and you've been groping, you've been finding it so difficult to know your way. Come to the Word of God, for it is a lamp for your feet, and it is that light which you so desperately need that will shine like a beacon, that will open the way before you and give you understanding as you come and say, Lord, open your word to me. Open my eyes which seem so dull. Send your Holy Spirit to help me to see the things in your word which will grant me light and life and blessing. The word of God also comes with such tremendous power. How is it that a young man shall keep his way? We read in one hundred, Psalm 119 and verse 9. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. How is it that a young man or a young woman can in this world of temptation, in this world where there are so many things that allure and attract, how is it that a person can keep their way pure when we come to the word of God? It stabilizes us. It strengthens us. It's like putting calcium into the backbone to help us to stand tall, even as Daniel and his three young companions did in Nebuchadnezzar's court. It was there that the Word of God was active and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. One more psalm which speaks of the Word of God. Earlier in the Psalter, we come to Psalm 19 rather than 119. And here we read of God's revelation. First of all, there is the revelation which God has written in nature, which he has written and emblazoned across the sky. And the psalmist says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. But then not only do we see God revealed in creation, but most especially in his special revelation in his word. Verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. Just as the good shepherd comes along and he restores our soul, the word of God does that very same work within us. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. They are more to be desired than gold. Yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter. Some of the prophets spoke of the word of God as sweet. The psalmist here says the word is sweeter than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them, by the word of God, your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Oh, I would hold up the word of God once again to you, dear friend, that you would come to it and that you would find light and life. And most especially that you would hear of it speak of Jesus who came to live among us to give his very life that you and I, sinners lost, 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 one who has come to show us the way 
and that we might come to him and return to the Father through Jesus Christ, his shed blood. Oh, would you come today, come to the cross, come to know his life. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6.